Hey, it's Mr. Lineski with the last video for Unit 7, uh, Section 4. We're looking at geometric mean and special right triangles. So hopefully a quick uh, video here as we only have a little half sheet. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is geometric mean. So if I have a right triangle, triangle ABC, and let's say that the right angle is here on angle A, um, if I drop down an altitude from angle A, and create another right triangle, and let's say that's point D, uh, we create something that is called the geometric mean altitude theorem. Um, and what that says is that if I take length CD and compare that to length DA, which is the altitude, that that will be equivalent to DA over DB. Um, and the way that I'm going to describe this to you all is sort of like a little heartbeat. Um, whenever we look at the sort of pattern that it's following, it almost looks like a little blip on a, heart, uh, on a heartbeat monitor. It goes CD, DA, and then it goes DA, DB. So it kind of makes like a little upside down T, so to speak. Um, so let's take a look at an example problem here. If we were solving for side E, kind of hard to see, but that's an E there. Um, if I wanted to solve for E, that's the altitude. And so all we're going to do is just make our little heartbeat. 6 is to E as E is to 24. And then as always, we're going to cross multiply and solve for E. So E times E is E squared. Uh, 6 times 24 is equal to 144. And then we square root both sides to undo that square, and we get that E is equal to 12. Um, over here, we're not solving for the altitude, but we're still going to do our little heartbeat pattern. So we're going to go X is to 8 as 8 is to 4. So again, it's just that pattern. If you can remember that pattern, not too bad. So we'll say X is to 8 as 8 is to 4. Again, we cross multiply, we get 4x equals 64. Divide both sides by 4, and we get x is equal to 16. All right, so that was our little geometric mean bit. Um, the next part, what we're going to talk about are two particular types of special right triangles. The first one we'll look at is called a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Um, 45, 45, and 90 refer to the angle measurements inside of a triangle. Um, and then it means that their uh, sides follow a specific ratio. Um, so there's two approaches you can take to solving these problems. One way is with ratios. Another way um, is sort of a little different way that I'll show you guys. Um, I think it's a little bit easier. Um, but if you want to see the ratio way, if this way is a bit confusing for you, just ask your teacher. Um, so you can use these ratios 1 to 1 to square root of 2. Um, what I'm going to do is change that into variables and call it a, a, a square root of 2. Um, what you need to remember about a 45, 45, 90 is that if you recall from back in, gosh, I'll say unit 4, maybe unit 5, I think it was unit 4, that if I have two angles that are congruent, that means that the sides that are opposite those angles have to be congruent as well. And then if the other angle is 90 degrees, what we've created is an isosceles right triangle. So that means that two of the sides opposite the 45 degree angle are always going to be the same. Hence the A and the A. Two of the sides are always going to be the same. Um, and then the other side is going to follow this formula of A square root of 2. Um, so the way that I set these problems up is I always fill in the missing angles, so 45, 45, and 90. Um, and then I just write down those angles, 45, 45, 90. And then beneath that, we're going to kind of put like a little chain of command. Um, and we're going to put the ratios that match with each of those angles. So A, A, A square root of 2. And then underneath that, we're going to fill in what we know. So across from 45 degrees is a 9. So I'll list a 9 right here. Across from this 45 degree angle is a Y, so I'll list a Y there. And then across from the 90 degree angle is X. And essentially what we're saying with these two lines here is we're almost putting like a little equal sign in between each of these things. So in other words, we're saying A is equal to 9, A is equal to Y, 
and a square root of 2 is equal to x. Um, and so the idea is once we know what a is, we just fill in the blanks. So you always want to find a, and that's kind of what the note's going to be here. Look for a. Once you know what a is, then the rest of it's just fill in the blanks. Um, so here we know that a is equal to 9. So if a is equal to y, we can just fill the 9 in right there, substitution. So y would also equal 9. And if you remember, that means these two sides are congruent. That makes sense. Here, x is equal to a square root of 2. And if we know a is 9, then we can say that x is equal to 9 square root of 2. We don't need a decimal. In fact, we're going to just leave that in simplest radical form. Um, again, that's something that you'll want to practice for Algebra 2 time. Um, for this next one here, so um, notice the angles are not listed, but if I notice that two of the sides are the same, 6 square root of 2, 6 square root of 2, that means I can then assume that this is a 45, 45, 90. Um, and so again, what I'll do is kind of just list off the angles here. So 45, 45, 90. And I apologize, I'm tight on space here. A, A, A square root of 2. And so across from the 45s is that 6 square root of 2. So this is 6 square root of 2. And across from 90 is X. So we're essentially saying here that A equals 6 square root of 2. And so to solve for x, we need to substitute in a. So that becomes 6 square root of 2 times square root of 2. So notice, a is 6 square root of 2, and we're substituting this in for this little a here, but then we still have this extra square root of 2. So now square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 6 times 2 is 12. So the answer to x would be 12. Um, so there's kind of a tricky situation that if I give you a 45, 45, 90, um, but I just give you the hypotenuse and I ask you to find the missing sides, um, there's sort of a hint that we can use here. Uh, to find the missing sides, all you have to remember is that it's going to be half the length of the hypotenuse and then times square root of 2. So here, again, because these sides are marked congruent and that's marked 90, I know that y has to equal 45 degrees because it's asking for the angle there. So now the hint that I'm talking about is if I give you just the hypotenuse, um, to find the missing sides, we're going to take half of the hypotenuse. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. And then we're going to take that number and multiply it by the square root of 2. So the answer to x here would be 5 square root of 2. So in other words, if I told you that that was equal to, I don't know, 22, I would say 22 divided by 2 is 11, and then this would be 11 square root of 2. So half the hypotenuse times the square root of 2. Just a little trick for you. All right, the other type of special right triangle is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, 30, 60, 90, again, refers to the angles inside the triangle. Um, if you wanted to do it using ratios and cross multiplying, then you get these numbers, 1 square root of 3, 2. Um, or the method that I'm going to use, again, involves that letter A. So it would be A, A square root of 3, and 2A. Um, so across from 30 degrees is going to be our a, across from 60 degrees is going to be our a square root of 3, and then across from 90 is where 2a is going to live. Um, so it says solve for the missing side lengths. Um, I'll get to this in a moment. So here's our 60 degree angle, which means that this up here is 30 degrees, because that's 90. So just like we did on the other thing, I'm going to list out 30, 60, 90. And then below that, I'm going to list out a, a square root of 3, 2a. And so across from 30 is 5. Across from 60, let's just call this x. Forgot to put variables in here, and let's call this one y. So remember, we're putting little equal signs in between here. So realistically, I'm saying a is equal to 5. I'm saying a square root of 3 equals x. 
and I'm saying 2a equals y. So now, just like we did before, we want to look for a. Once we know a, that unlocks the rest of the problem. Um, so a is equal to 5, so that means here I can just substitute a 5 here, and I can substitute the 5 there. So x is going to equal 5 square root of 3. y is going to equal 2 times 5, which equals 10. So those would be my answers for x and y. Um, so that's if we're given the side that's across from 30 degrees. That's kind of always the easiest one. So let's take a one. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's take a look at one that might not be as easy. Um, so across from 30 degrees, as always, 30, 60, 90. Across from 30, a, a square root of 3, 2a. So across from the 30 is x. 60 degrees would go here. Across from 60 is y. And across from 90 is 32. So keep in mind, a equals x. a square root of 3 equals y. 2a equals 32. So 2a equals 32, I can solve for a. Once we know what a is, that unlocks the rest of the problem. So 32 divided by 2 tells me that a is equal to 16. So now I can just substitute 16 in anywhere I see an a. So x would equal 16, y would equal 16 square root of 3. And remember, no decimals, we just leave that as is. So those would be our answers there. Alright, and then the last one that we will look at 30, 60, 90, a, a root 3, 2a, across from 30, let's call it x, across from 60 is 4, square root of 3, across from 90 is y, we'll call that y. So remember, our three little equations are a equals x, we have a square root of 3 equals 4 square root of 3, and we also have 2a equals y. So where we can solve for a is right here. To get a by itself, we'll divide by square root of 3. Luckily, these square root of 3's cancel out, and we're just left with a equals 4. So now we know a equals 4, so x has to equal 4. And then 2 times 4 gives us 8, and that's what y is going to equal. Alright, if you ever forget this stuff and you kind of, you know, forget these little ratios, um, you can always fall back on just the basic trig uh, ratios that we talked about in section 7.2. So for example, I can still look at this as a reference angle and say, oh, this is opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. And I can still use the basic trig uh, ratios to help me solve. Alright, so that is it for section 7.4. Thank you for watching. I know it, and now you know it.